Alright, so that's Luna and Tora. Tora on the top there now. Luna right here, and Vida's right here. Come up here, Vida. And here's Vida. Well, we're hiking the Rim Trail today, and uh, I want to give you guys a look around um, in the forest now. We're at about 42, 4,400 feet, and I'll let you tour around in this heavy, deep rainforest. I'll go to the left first. So all through here, there's heavy, big old nice cedar. And when they're wet, they're exceptional to hike through because the air is so loaded with smell, and it's a lovely smell. And um, you can see them, and just the, uh, it's just a beautiful spot to hike. And I'll swing you right around. You can see it's an old, some of these trees are pretty old. Now you can see the lichen hanging from the trees, and I hope you can see it. Um, let me get it on that film, yeah. And uh, these old trees, they grow lichen now. In, in some regions of BC where the woodland caribou are in the deep winter, you see they would come up and eat that lichen in the winter because they couldn't hold the snow, ground would be covered with snow. And so they would eat that lichen, that's uh, what that's for. Well, it maybe has other purposes. But pretty cool, huh? This is a cool spot. Look at that big old fur there. Oh, wow. That's a big old boy. He's as white as I am. Yeah, pretty cool up in here. So the girls, they love hiking in this weather. Now, those three are sisters. Their father's Dakota. Luna, Vada, and Tora. Now, I'm going to set this uh, just over this way, I think. Pointed. They'll come down by me. I'll get to where I can see. There. So these are three really good dogs for hiking. So both directions here we come first off the valley's way down there. So we hike down the valley all the way up to way over there and then we get on the side of this ridge and we stay on this ridge all the way along and it's called the Rim Trail and you can go right all the way down and you can go right around the mountain on this thing and you can go right around the mountain that way. Now when I get back there where I come up out of the valley I can turn and take another ridge and I can do the exact same thing on that ridge up there and I can go right across because there's like three ridges and then I can actually angle over and go to that final ridge and that final ridge is really nice. It's, it's high but I like this ridge in the summer because it's cooler in here for us. It's like a little mini rainforest, right? Because um, the sun gets behind the mountain right away in the summer, gets behind the mountain over there and shades all this. So you get all this uh, cedar and it, it's all shaded. So it's a much different fauna in here, not different culture of tree and you get a lot more light in and it, the more rainforest on this side. The water cools and stays in springs and stuff. We always get our, uh, just actually back in here, not far, is a nice spring for us. 
goes very, very good to hike along here in the hot summer. It's a good spot. Up top, it dries out a bit. You don't have the undergrowth, and they get sun all day, and so it's uh, a different. It's almost all fur up there. But here you get the little cedars everywhere, and you get other trees too, like these guys. So it's, it's very, very cool. And uh, what I wanted to, I had filmed just over, I had walked down out into the open back there so that you could get a different view, but I wanted to showcase this a little bit to give you an idea, all the moss, and it's a different look than what I normally film, so I thought it'd be kind of cool. Now, we really liked these days because the air is hung down. And so the smell is just loaded in here. It's just rich. And uh, my face is just moist from the, the rain is starting right here. It, it's not dropping from very far up. So it's just right, right in amongst us. So it's kind of very nice. Also, the oxygen level is very high because it can't get up today. So yeah, right in here, no pollution in here, just solid trees, right? So just a ton of oxygen. Very, very good in here. Yeah, not like being in a city where there's a ton of pollution and it holds it down. Here, no pollution, all the oxygen right here for us. Very, very cool. Uh, quite a bit different. But I'll take you for another little spin around. I don't want to turn this thing too fast. But, uh... And these are big, tall trees in here. I'll see if I can show you how tall some of these trees are. Let me just try it. Look at them guys. Can you believe it? <laughs> this is logger paradise. Logger paradise, man. Only takes a few trees to build a whole house. Yeah. This this one big tree right here, this big fella. I tell you what, you do a lot of framing with the wood out of that. Yeah, I got a sawmill and I can cut a tree that size too, which is pretty cool. So there's five, four or five trees here you'd get enough wood to make one house, small house, thousand square foot house. But you could frame the whole house out of those five trees. Not so much uh, how much two by four and two by six you'd get out of there. You could get two by tens for the floor joists, everything. And I could saw it all. Now, just thousand square feet, but if you needed 1,500, well, just take four more trees. But that's how much those big trees uh, produce. And that tree's pretty old. Now they uh, are slated to come through over behind me and take out a bunch of the big old trees. Now th in BC we clear cut. We run over everything. They, uh, they're not selective. They just take it all down and reseed the whole thing. And uh, they normally don't uh, reseed more than one or two species, but sometimes they do. But uh, they're, they're, they're looking for species that will grow a little faster. But this region's not slated. It's not uh, marked, so I'm happy. Uh, I, I live in BC. I got nice roads, nice hospitals. Everything's good. I understand we grow trees to sell, so that's what we do and as far as cutting them down when they're ready totally fine they come back and it's not uh, it's not out of line I mean there's good and bad about everything but this is I'll be able to hike this for another 15 20 years 
See, there's not enough big timber in here to warrant cutting this yet. There's only a handful of big ones. The rest are not quite ready, so it doesn't pay. I mean, this big guy was just a little guy last time they were through. And I don't know when that was, but it's a long time ago. But, uh, but yeah, very, very cool to hike through this stuff. Uh, I got my uh, tilt a little bit wrong. I'll just set that back. Yeah. These girls found something behind me. I'll turn around. These are seriously good dogs, these three elk hounds. Best in the world, these three. They're phenomenal dogs. See that tree, he, he cracked off. He busted down. So yeah, Tora, her uh, granddaughter, Sage. Wendy's gonna bring her over. She's over at Wendy's right now. Wendy's going to bring her over and Carew's going to hook up with her and we'll have a litter out of Sage. Sage is a daughter of Tika. That's Tora's, Tika's, Tora's daughter, so Sage is Tora's granddaughter. So Tora will be great grandma right away. Tora's just about 11. This is Tora, right there. That's powerhouse dog, that Tora. She's le coming 11. Hike all day, fight all night. She still rules and does not hesitate to take anybody on. She's scarred up and battle wounded, but she can fight. Holy, nobody can control her. Yeah, she's a powerful dog. She's the ruler of the whole pack. Well, Dakota's supreme ruler, but Tora runs day to day. Females always rule day-to-day -day stuff and she rules well so yeah that's our uh, that's our life today boys cruising the tall timber so, so we've got some pups coming from like Vida will cycle later this year and we'll take a litter out of Vida Luna will cycle this summer We'll take a litter out of Luna. So we'll take a litter out of Luna. Tora's done having pups. But these two, we'll get another litter out of them. They're phenomenal dogs, these two. And uh, Letta will have a litter. Willow. Sage and Willow are twins. So Wendy has them both. And uh, we kept a brand new daughter out of Tika from Swix. So we have a Swix Tika daughter over at Wendy and Dale kept her and I have the brand new Rita out of Karu and Kai. Kai and Tika are sisters. Both daughters of Tor, last letter. And so we got we got lots of this genetic. We like this genetic. This is this is superior genetic material, this stuff. Very, very good genetic. Yeah, so we're going to have some really, really good dogs. And running siblings, you see, is the very greatest thing ever. I'll talk more on siblings one day, but uh, running siblings, boy, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. You run two sisters or a brother-sister combo, or even running three sisters is absolutely profound. It's, it's really something. Yeah. This is a cool set of dogs these days. There's a little age difference between them, but, uh, and they all got different mothers, but all exceptional mothers. Vida's mother is Gaeta, Luna's mother is Tecla, Tora's mother was Mia, and all three of them females were outstanding, totally outstanding. So yeah, I bred all three of those females to Dakota and got all of this. Yeah, pretty cool. Dakota was over 10 years old when he had 
Butter. Yeah, Butter was out of the last litter of Dakota so far. He still thinks he's going to have another one yet. If I could get a female to stand for him, he would. But uh, he's, he's uh, pushing the envelope now. He's 13. Well, be 13 soon. But uh, he thinks he can still do her, so I'm going to let him try. Well, we're going to carry on with our day. What a what a great day. I love hiking in here, boy. This is cool. Yeah, very nice, uh, nice hiking. And the girls enjoy it. They just think it's wonderful. No sense staying at home. They figure, let's, let's hustle. So, yeah, good group of dogs. Yeah. This dog, these dogs are bred to work with the handler. And they're exceptional. You know, they're scent dogs. They just think this is the greatest. This, this whole place is just loaded. So, yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little look around there.